Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Jorgen's Path. So, the last place we left off, we had just woken up with Lake and, uh, with Lake and Jorgen. We headed to the cafeteria and we're reconvening with everyone there, so let's see how the rest of the day plays out, shall we? Or at least in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy Lemurtania and let's jump right in. Alright, <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Alright, alarm chain, you're up. Alright. <laughs> That's fine with you. Sit wherever you like. There's plenty of seats left here. Thanks! Much appreciated! Bjorn and Travis choose to sit next to each other, next to me. And Jorgen sits down next to Lake, leaving a free spot next to Rune. How are you all feeling? You ready for the hours of lectures ahead of us? Oh, don't remind me. I slept like shit. Heh. <laughs> Looks like it's not just me. Not very comforting, though, is it? No. What do you think we will get? Oh, I hope they serve croissants. I rarely buy them for myself, but I hunt for them every time I'm staying at a hotel. It's almost a tradition for me at this point. Pancaker again would be nice, but I doubt we'll get the same thing two days in a row. My bet is on breakfast cereal. What else would the bowls be, for here, be here for? Everyone seems like talking about the food. After all, that's one thing that connects us all. People from all the backgrounds of every class, every age, and every profession. Students and professors, millionaires and factory workers, best friends and complete strangers. We all have to like, we all have to, and like to, eat. In the meantime, a few of us went for a glass of juice or coffee from the espresso machine standing at one of the tables near the entrance. The cafeteria slowly, fill, slowly fills with people, and even though it's already past 7 o'clock, there are still some people from our table missing. At that moment, Coach walks into the cafeteria of Professor Arn. Attention, everyone! Sadly, we have to start the day with some bad news. Due to the heavy snowfall, the bus won't be able to come for us, so we have to skip today's trip to the town. Fortunately, we won't miss all the lectures. The university is working hard right now to set everything up for online streaming, and we will watch them from here, in the cafeteria. However, only lectures held in the main lecture hall will be streamed. That's all for now. Breakfast will be served in a minute. As soon as Coach finishes speaking, a hubbub of students' mixed voices fills the room. The panther makes his way towards our table and sits down next to Rune with a sigh. Morning, Devin. Is everything okay? Yes, thank you. I had hoped to have a less eventful morning, but everything's fine. So, we're stuck in the guest house? Unfortunately, only until the afternoon. The snowplows should get here by then. As if on cue, the guest house staff enters with a cart with our food. And yes, they have croissants. Each table gets a basket with various kinds of bread, an assortment of jams and pastes, a pitcher of milk, and a bag of corn cereals. There's also a separate dish with sweet pastries and one with brunost, as well as regular coconut cheese and a bowl of fruits. Looks like they don't serve fish in this guest house. Not that I mind, I haven't had any in a long time. I'm not a fan of very sweet breakfast, so I skip the cereal and just make myself a few sandwiches and grab a croissant. Next to me, Lake starts putting a bit of everything on his plate. Two pastries, a few slices of bread, he tops with cheese and tomatoes, some more with cocoa paste and jam, some strawberries and oranges, and then a bowl of cereal. Jorgen looks, like, looks, Jorgen looks at that with disapproval, just sipping on his coffee. You will get round in no time if you keep eating like this, Lake. Oh shush, I'm on a trip. I can't let myself indulge like this once in a while. Where do you fit all that anyway? You're as thin as a sheet of paper. Hey, I'm not that thin and I have a fast metabolism. Hey, Carvin, you're not eating anything. You're not eating anything? Still thinking of what to grab, but maybe I'll go with a bit of everything too. How are the pastries? I feel like having something sweet today. Easily as good as yesterday's sunshine rolls. Lake ate a sandwich and a half of his rubber horn already, while I'm still just picking up some food for myself. Damn, he really has an appetite. Hey, don't look at me like that. I hope we'd go to the town and I'd grab some nice food there. Maybe visit a bakery like in my dream today. Gotta perk myself up a bit. I look forward to the trip, too, but nothing is lost. We'll get there tomorrow. I guess, yeah. Tomorrow is still quite far away, though. Jorgen, you're not eating anything? A coffee for me is enough. I'll grab an apple or two later. Hey, those for Berberhorn are really tasty. I'll take your word for it. I stay away from anything that has rhubarb in it. I wonder if cereal with coffee would taste okay. You all know my thoughts on this. It definitely 100% fucking does. Lake. Oh, that was Jorgen saying that. <laughs> Lake. What? <laughs> Don't. As I'm listening to all the conversations happening around me, a warm feeling arises in my chest. It's been only a day since we arrived, but we already look and act like a group of friends. 
Even if we all study in different departments, just for the duration of the camp, we can keep together, and it makes me happy. Hmm. There really is a distinct lack of stuff for Klaus. Hmm. That was a nice meal. Not bad, yeah. The key to a good meal is variety. Oh, by the way, Carvin, did you find your key? Oh yeah, uh, but just this morning. Oh, that's good. Where was it at? I hoped no one would ask. This is embarrassing as all hell. I had it in my camera bag. Carvin, one day you're going to forget your head somewhere. What's important is that I have it back. Where did you stay the night, then? Oh, Lake and Jorgen were kind enough to take me in, although they only have two beds, so they borrowed a mattress from Travis. That also replies to Miko's question from yesterday, I guess. Ah, so that's what you needed the mattress for. Travis looks somewhat taken aback. Should I feel insulted or something? Yeah, what did, yeah, what did you think we were going to do with it? I don't know. You just asked if I had a spare one, then came straight to my room to borrow it. Oh, by the way, Carvin, go, can I go see your room again after breakfast? You had a nice view from there. Huh, that's sudden. But it's like, I probably shouldn't think... Should, probably shouldn't think about it too hard. He's not the kind of person to have ulterior motives. Sure thing, no problem. I'm done with breakfast. I think I'll go there now. Ooh, nice. I can hurry up too then. Lake leans above his plate and wolfs down, or should I say lions down, the rest of his food in seconds. What a beast. I glance sideways at the rest of the table. The others seem to be too occupied with talking to, to pay any attention to us. Miko is discussing something with Travis, Bjorn chats with Jorgen, and Rune is busy with Coach. All done. We can go. You know, I would have waited for you if you asked. I wouldn't want to keep you waiting. <laughs> they and I stand up from the table and say goodbye to everyone before going to my room. Oh, 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 what's going to happen here? God, I love the glow in this room. It's so beautiful. It's nice to be here again. I almost forgot how this room looks. Despite that, it still feels mine. Everything is just as I left it. My things are arranged neatly on the shelves and my emptied bag is still standing near the door. This room is so nice. I think he got the most lucky of us all. There's such a chill vibe here. And that double bed. Lake flops down on it with such an impact that it almost knocks off the pillows. And it's so comfortable, too. You know, you really are even livelier than usual. It is exciting to be here. I'm happy we're staying in a place like this. It's a nice change from our dorm. Our dorm isn't half bad either, but it's not on the level of this place for sure. Oh, Carvin, you were supposed to show me my photo. Is it ready yet? Ah, yes. It takes like ten minutes. It was already developed by the time we got food. I should change into fresh clothes, but I'll do that in a moment. I sit down on the bed, take the photo out, and put it between us. I'm curious of the result, too. He's a cutie. Ah, man. <sighs> I, I just wonder where all the organ content is. Does the organ content start later? Because it's really feeling more like a lake root. All right. This is so cool. He pleps. I didn't notice in the rumor at breakfast, but he seems really tired in the photo, like he didn't sleep for a day. Yeah, yeah he's getting his fucking brains banged out by Torolf. He leans on me, his eyes still on the photo. Can I have it? You sure thing, I took it for you. Thank you, Carvin, you're the best. <laughs> the weight pressing against my shoulder slowly increases. I turn to look at Lake and see his head pressed against my arm limply. His lips are slightly open, his two cute fangs peeking slightly and glistening with saliva. White strands of hair obscure most of his face, shining in the morning light like silver. He's asleep. He must have been really tired. How much more could, how much more than I could much more than I could tell from the way he acted. I feel a sudden urge to pet his head, but I don't want him to wake up. So instead I sit still and let him rest. He looks like he needs that. There's still a lot of time until the lectures. I can just stay here and watch the trees disappear under the snow outside. Or think of the times I've spent with Lake. There's less of them than I would like, but I really need to meet him more often than once we're back. Once it's warmer, I could take him on the beach. There's some okay ones not far from Anslow. They're nowhere near as nice as the ones in Italy, but still. I should have played some music. Even with Lake sleeping, it would be nice to listen to something together instead of sitting in silence. I wonder what kind of music he likes. I never saw him listening to any music, now that I think of it. Maybe he doesn't like music. No, that's impo- No, that's not possible. I don't know anyone who could say that with full honesty. I consider him my friend, yet there's so much I don't know about him. I can't ask him now, though. He looks so helpless and vulnerable sleeping in. A bit silly, but in an endearing way. I lean on my other arm and look out the window. The white snowflakes dancing in the wind outside now reminding me of Lake's mane. Oh. 
make it such a cooter? I stand up and stretch out, groaning lightly. The chairs here definitely weren't designed with watching an hour-long lecture in mind. Lake, uh, Lake, it's over now. Huh? Lake rubs his eyes, looking around in confusion. The lecture's over, we have a break, and the next one is in an hour. Oh, right. Good thing you don't snore, you slept through half of this one. Though it's my fault, maybe I shouldn't have talked him into going to a lecture about neurobiology. It turned out to be pretty technical, and I very well understand it couldn't be too interesting for him. That bad, huh? Sorry, Carvin, I'm wrecked today. Why, though? We didn't go to sleep that late. Yeah, but I couldn't sleep for a few hours after that. I like that sometimes. I like how he is, uh, looking to the left. <laughs> Lake? Lake? Hey, you! Why won't you meet my gaze? Look me in the eye when you talk to me, Lake! How about we go for a walk? I should wake you up a bit. Sorry, I think I'll just go to my room and nap for a bit. Hey, that's fine, too. You look like you need some rest. Let's get you to your room, okay? Like, nods sleepily and then leans on me. Oh, That's not how you get to your room. Sorry, but I'm not carrying you there, at least not this time. I know. He wraps arms... He wraps arms around me and doesn't let go anyway. Around as people... Around as people leave the makeshift lecture hall, shooting us some weird looks along the way. Not that I mind too much, though. I'm used to them. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll go now. I think I can still find my way to my room. Like joins a stream of people exiting the room without a look back. Looks like I have an hour for myself. What should I do? Before I go to my room. Uh, who else is here? Let's see. Stay here. I don't feel like going anywhere. I feel too lazy after the lectures. I sit down again and slump in my chair, closing my eyes and listening to the postips of students leaving the room. The brain. What an incredible complex structure. Somehow inside these folds and vast networks through electrical impulses, our consciousness arises. Ever since it first occurred to me, it never ceased to amaze me. The more I learn about it, the more complicated it turns out to be, and the answer to this riddle seems ever more elusive. Suddenly, the fro on my neck bristles. Am I being watched? Oh! It's Torolf. Uh, let me go back. Uh, look for Miko. A walk, a walk sounds nice. I could use some fresh air after sitting here for so long. I wonder what Miko is doing. I doubt he was here for this lecture. I don't think neurology interests him. But, looking to the far end of the room, that's just who I see. Miko, hey there! Oh, Carvin, hello! What are you doing here? I was sure you'd skip this lecture. Your course doesn't have much to do with neurology. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd try to attend all the lectures today. Not every day I have a chance to learn something interesting from beyond our curriculum. Hmm, fair. I don't think I have the willpower to sit through the whole day of lectures voluntarily. Not when there are other fun things to do. Good thing we have a break now, then. We can do something fun together. Actually, I already had something planned for this break, but maybe you would like to accompany me? Sure. Great. We leave the room alongside the other students, making our way to the corridor. So, did you learn something from the last lecture? Well, not really. <laughs> Is Jorgen here? The lecture did a good job of explaining everything, but there was so much I didn't know I don't remember much of it. Not to say I regret being there. By the way, where are we going? By the way, where are we going? Outside, but first to my room. I need to get a few things. Or you could grab your camera in the meantime if you want. Now that I have my digital camera back, it would be nice to walk around and take some photos of the surroundings. I couldn't go too crazy with the instant camera, especially as I took only one film pack with eight photos with me. I'll go get it. How about we meet the, at the entrance? Sounds good. Miko enters his room, and I direct my steps to my own. I wonder what he's up to that, so that sounded a bit mysterious. Let's see. Okay. I've been waiting for the wolf for some time now, but there are still no signs of him. Opening the camera bag, I once again go through the lenses I took with me. Uh, let's go back. Just, uh, go to my room. Alright. Seems like I'm not getting much opportunity to be with the organ. Back in my room again. The air here smells comforting of wood and clean linen. I woke up straight to my bed and flopped down onto it, letting the soft mattress support me and sigh loudly. It feels good to let go. And having a huge bed just for myself is pretty great, too. I lie like this for a while, enjoying the silence. I have a bit less than an hour for myself. There's not much I can do in that time. Maybe I should also take a nap. I wonder how Lake is doing. When the lecture started, he just deflated in his seat and slept through half of them. Poor lion. I have to make him go to bed earlier today. I'll just grab a book for now and read a bit. I took two different ones with me, and I haven't started either yet. I 
put on some music and flop back onto the bed to indulge myself in vivid hallucinations until the lectures resume. There we go. That went quite fast, didn't it? Maybe for you. The lectures for today have concluded. I talked both Jorg I talked both Jorgen and Lake into joining me for the last one, and Rune tagged along with Jorgen. This many in a row is, well, a lot. Too many for me, to be frank. I didn't attend all of them, but still, it's well into the afternoon already. That last one was interesting, at least. I never knew dolphins could communicate with us and understand the grammar of our language. The lecturer could show us more of the experiments themselves. That was the most interesting. That one was nice, yeah. A shame we missed a few I wanted to see, though. I was excited to hear about brain implants, and we get equilibria of stellar systems instead. So, what plans do y'all have for now? We're free for the rest of the day, sans the dinner. Yeah, I need to resume working on a project for the university. I'm already a bit behind on it. Oh? Now? Yeah, I won't have time for it after the camp. I try to finish it quickly and have a free evening. So, see you later? See ya! See ya! Damn, working the, during the camp? He's crazy. You could take a lesson from him, you know. Thank you, I'm fine. So, how about you two? Any ideas what, you, what to do now? How about a walk? I could use some exercise after sitting all day. I'll go back to our room for now. I want to finish reading the book I started yesterday. A walk sounds nice. I'm up for that. Okay, let's go grab jackets so we can meet at the entrance then. Oh, I'm fine going out as I am. I can wait for you in the lobby. A non continued to the corridor with Jorgen alone. Neither of us speak until we reach the stairs. The silence doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I still feel like I should say something. What books are you reading? A book about near-death experiences. That's why I mentioned the topic earlier today. Jorgen seems to have a fixation on this. It features both theoretical data and accounts from people who went through them. The topic is interesting, but ultimately I was only disappointed by what I have read. I started it, though, so I feel like I should finish. Disappointed? You seem to be fascinated by the topic. Yes, but then I read some more about it after breakfast. I don't really believe these experiences are inexplicable or metaphysical in any way. It's more your field of study, but I know a bit, a bit about the topic, too. Their impact on people that experience them is what is interesting. What people see during these visions, tunnels of light, celestial beings talking to them, life review, out-of-body experiences, a sense of peace, what people describe is pretty much identical to a DMT trip. In fact, it's entirely possible that it's exactly what triggers these effects, naturally produced at DMT flooding our brains as we die. Still, they usually have positive effects on people that experience them, not unlike regular DMT trips, though. Just the context is dissimilar, so the lessons learned are likely lesser. That's... I don't know. It sounds pretty bleak, you know? Maybe, not to me. How do you know all this, though? Why the interest in the topic? Let's say I've done a lot in my life already, and you see a lot of things going around clubs. I'll go continue reading. Don't make Lake wait for wait too long for you. Ah, right. The door closes after Jorgen, and the silence that comes after it seems seems louder than our conversation. Actually, I really do believe in the metaphysical. Like, I believe that's very similar to pretty much probably what quantum mechanics are. Might be a way of explaining the metaphysical, because... Like, guys, go read up on the axis of evil. It is a thing that might actually throw human science uh, just in the trash. <laughs> It, it, it is a very, very complicated thing that might have us, that might require us to rethink pretty much all of our science. It's that fucking crazy. It's absolutely insane. But yeah, like when we think, when we think we have like finally nailed something down, we make this discovery where it's like, oh shit, okay, the last 100 years of research and uh, testing are pretty much invalid. Okay, let's start over. So, like, I don't think we're ever going to really unlock the full mysteries of the universe. I just don't think we can. Like, un unless we can find a way to actually access the metaphysical or the quantum on demand, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Anyway. <clears throat> the door closes after Jorgen, and the silence that comes after it seems louder than our conversation. I turn around and continue to my room. Do-do-do. Do-do. What crazy weather. It's not that bad. At least it's almost not snowing anymore. Indeed, it seems to be getting better. The sun is peeking from behind the clouds, painting the valley before us with yellow hues. I really could live here. I don't think I'd ever get tired of this view. I'd have enough after a week, I bet. I already lived most of my life in the middle of nowhere. 
What interesting, what's interesting, what interesting could I, what's the, blah, what interesting thing could I find here? It's just more the same, if you say so. Though, I still have high hopes for the town, though. It's cold, so I start trotting alongside the guest house, Lake walking beside me. We don't say much, just taking the scenery and the serene atmosphere of this place. There's no one other than us here in a good, a good few kilometer radius, most likely. Even with Lake by my side, I feel a tad solitary. Carvin, have you seen him? Uh, who? Not who, but what? It's a film. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Ah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me go ahead and go to the main menu so I can get that crunching sound out of the way. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!